no one should have to hide their faith or be afraid of being harmed because of it. And thankfully, U.S. immigration law recognizes this and allows people who fear being harmed in their country because of their religion to get asylum here in the United States. And this lets them live and work here permanently. If you fear returning to your country because someone could harm you because of your religion or the way that you interpret your religion or even because you're not perhaps religious at all, well then this video is for you. I'm gonna tell you who can get asylum in the United States on the basis of religious persecution and what it takes to win a religious persecution case. I'm Brian Manning and I'm an asylum lawyer. I draw on my 11 years of experience working for the government's two main agencies for asylum and refugee affairs to help my clients secure their future in America through asylum. Now, I used to be an asylum officer for the government and I use perspectives from that experience on the inside to help people all over the country present the strongest asylum case possible. Now, on a personal note, I myself am a person of faith, and so this topic, religious persecution, is really important to me. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to fear being harmed just for living out my faith. No one should have to live like that. And so I'm passionate about helping people get asylum on the basis of religious persecution. Now, you may know that to get asylum in the United States, it's not enough just to show that you have been or could be seriously harmed in your country. You've also got to show that the harm was or would be motivated by one of five characteristics about you. Now these characteristics, which are sometimes referred to as the five protected grounds or the five protected characteristics, are your race, nationality, political opinion, something called membership in a particular social group, and yes, you guessed it, fifth, your religion. So if the government in your country or other people there have harmed you or may harm you, and they're doing this because of your religion, well, then you may be able to get asylum in the United States. Now, what does this protected ground of religion cover exactly under US asylum law? Well, it of course covers belonging to or practicing the major religions that we've all heard of. So if you're a Christian, for example, and you're from a country where people who are Christians are often targeted for harm simply because they're Christians, well, then this would be covered. And this goes for all religions. So a Muslim, a Hindu, or Jew who's facing harm because of their religion could qualify for asylum as well. And it doesn't matter what the main religion is in your country. If someone may harm you because of your religion, well, then you may be able to get asylum in the United States. And the religion protected ground under US asylum law covers lesser known religions too. Even if it's a religion that doesn't have that many followers or maybe isn't very formally organized in the way that major religions are, well this can still count for establishing a claim of persecution on account of your religion. In fact, what counts as a religion under the law is really pretty broad and flexible. If you've got a certain philosophy or organizing principles for understanding life or that you look to for guidance, well, this could, depending on the circumstances, count as a religion for purposes of getting asylum. And the agency that handles asylum applications called USCIS has instructed its asylum officers that they may not, quote, inquire into the popularity, truth, validity, or reasonableness of an applicant's religious beliefs. That means that if it's something that you truly believe in, it may qualify as a religion, even if it seems strange or even crazy to the asylum officer. And crucially, you can even get asylum for not believing or participating in a religion at all. That's right, being an atheist or agnostic is covered under the protected characteristic of religion. So if someone may hurt you because you're not religious, you may be able to get asylum. Also importantly, you don't have to be from a different religion than the person persecuting you in order to get asylum based on religious persecution. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if someone that belongs to the same religion as you may harm you because they think that you don't observe some particular aspect of the religion properly, or maybe you differ on an important point of theology within the religion, well, you could have a religious persecution claim. This happens a lot when religions have different denominations or sects. They often disagree with each other because of their differences in interpretation of the same religion, and sometimes this leads to violence or mistreatment. For example, this could be the case where Sunnis and Shias persecute each other despite that they're both adherents to Islam. And remember, this protected ground is broad. If someone is motivated to harm you because of your religion or what you believe about religion or the way that you practice it or even because you're not religious at all, then you may be able to get asylum on the basis of religious persecution. Now, what kind of harm do you have to show that you've suffered or that you may suffer on account of your religion to get asylum? Well, for the harm to count as persecution, which is what's required under the law, the harm has to be pretty serious. Being subjected to insults or taunts because of your religion would not be serious enough harm to count as persecution, while at the other end of the spectrum, being killed or tortured because of it would, of course, count as persecution. And that happens. There are places even today where people are killed because of their faith or where the government may imprison people long term 
because they convert from the religion supported by the government. But there's lots of space between these extremes, and there's a lot of things short of death or imprisonment that can happen to a person because of their religion that the American government may consider to be harm that's serious enough to rise to the level of persecution. So for example, measures a government may have in place that restrict your ability to practice your religion can constitute persecution especially where there's several such restrictions in place and having to follow them deeply affects you because your religious practice is so important to you. Governments sometimes ban membership in a religion or don't let people worship in public or sometimes even in private. Or maybe the government just harasses people of a certain religion, like by having the police constantly stop and question them. Well, these things can add up and when considered together or cumulatively, they can count as persecution. Note that it's not just governments that persecute people on religious grounds, paving the way to asylum in the United States. Individuals and groups or organizations that are not part of the government do this too. If your government is unable or unwilling to protect you from this kind of persecution, well, then you may qualify for asylum in America. Now, how do you convince the US government that there's a realistic possibility that you'll be persecuted in your country on religious grounds? Well, if no one has specifically hurt or threatened you in the past over your religion, which is actually the case for most people applying for asylum on religious grounds, well, then you need to convince the asylum officer that one, you are in fact covered by the protection for religion because you are religious or someone may think you are or may hurt you because you're not religious. And two, people like you tend to be persecuted in your country. In many cases, it's the first part, convincing the officer that you're genuinely a religious person that's more difficult. For example, there are some countries where there's an overwhelming amount of evidence in various reports saying that the country does bad things to people who convert from that country's official religion to another religion. So that's not the hard part in winning a case like that. But you see, asylum officers sometimes suspect that people who are claiming to have converted to a new religion, often after they've come to the United States, aren't being honest. The officers sometimes suspect that the person is claiming to have started following a new religion just so they can get asylum. So people may have their work cut out for them in terms of coming up with evidence that shows the officer that they're serious about their new religion that it's something real and important to them. A good asylum lawyer can advise you as to what kind of evidence you should get to make the strongest case possible. And they can also help you present a compelling picture of what it's like in your country for people like you, which is crucial to proving that there's a reasonable possibility that you'd be persecuted if you had to go back to your country. If you think someone could harm you in your country for religious reasons, well then I'd love to talk to you to see if I might be able to help you. I'm happy to answer your questions and to talk to you in detail about your situation in an asylum strategy session. Feel free to reach out to me by commenting on this video or sending a message through the Manning Asylum Law Facebook page or calling my office. That number is 713-909-0401. And for a quick overview of asylum, click on the link that I'm including below this video. And when you do that, we'll send you our free asylum guide. I'm Brian Manning of Manning Asylum Law, and it's my honor to support you in your asylum journey.